Matt Day, thanks for joining us at Stage Milk. So why, why acting? Look, I kind of just fell into it because I started very young. I was a kid. I was, um, I was 14 when I got my first professional job. Mm -hmm. So which was that was a, a show called Care of the Bartons. Care of the Bartons. I just call it the Bartons now, but that's what it was called. It was uh, like a 12 part um, series on the ABC based around a family called the Bartons. And uh, it was written by um, uh, Jocelyn Morehouse when she just got out of film school. So she was at Afters and got out. And that was, I think it was one of her first, first gigs. Um, and PJ was involved as well, PJ Hogan. Um, yeah, good, good so group of people to kick good group of off people, with, right? Yeah, good, <laughs> good group of people to kind of fall in with uh, at an early stage. But before that, I, I, you know, it was kind of, it was, um, I, I did drama at school, was told I kind of had a facility for it. Um, and that was probably when I was about 12. It was a great way of getting out of other classwork because I was not a good student, you know. I was terrible academically. We have that in common. Yeah, so I, I kind of started taking myself off after school to this place called St. Martin's Youth Theatre, which is still there, which is in South Area in Melbourne where I grew up. And we would do uh, classes and then put on a play every term. And uh, an agent came and saw me in a play and then sent me out to this audition for the Bartons, which I got and then got an agent and then that just kind of kept going. Then I got a play and then I got another series called House Rules at the ABC. Uh, with Jackie Weaver, who was playing my mum in that. Just a small name. Small name. Yeah. Yeah, and it just kind of snowballed, and it just kind of happened. And then, and then I got offered a job in Sydney, which was a country practice when I was 17 or 16. And, uh, yeah, I left school and said I'm leaving and dropped out and moved to Sydney and, and did that for two years. And um, 30 years later, I'm still doing it. So, How important were those years of training that you did at St Martin's, do you think? They were, they were pretty important. It was, it was mostly about, I mean, because it was very practical. It was really about, you know, rehearsal and putting on a play. So it was really throwing you right into just doing it. We didn't do a, a great deal of anything else, which is something I've kind of always had a bit of a, a chip on my shoulder about. I've never done any classical training or, you know, never movement work or vocal work. I mean, I had to do a lot of that to catch up later on in my career. I, I, especially, I moved to the UK for seven years uh, in 2000, and there was just like another level that I had to get up to. Um, and so I, I, you know, especially doing the accent, because uh, you couldn't just do Australian parts. I actually ended up doing a lot of American roles. But um, for that, I had to take myself off to like the Actors Centre in Soho and do classes there and, and I'd do weekly vocal classes and things like that to really kind of consolidate what I'd missed out mm. on in that sense. Yeah. But going back to what I did do, that was a great way of just learning on the job and just kind of um, um, just knowing that that was the world you were going to be operating in. And it kind of spoilt me for school <laughs> and for everything else because you go back to, you know, um, this kind of institution where you know, the adults are authority figures again, where you've just been working three months intensely with all these grown-up people who are your friends and, and colleagues. So, um, so it was a great experience in that regard. Difference between the industries in the UK and in Australia? Are there noticeable differences? Yeah, well, I mean, it's a lot bigger in the UK. I mean, um, you can be a jobbing actor, just a working actor, and you know get a mortgage and renovate your house you know can't do that here <laughs> no you cannot <laughs> not in sydney it's very hard that being said it's still really difficult and competitive and and um you know it's a hard industry but it, yeah they have more money it's a bigger population so you have you know that kind of that's reflected in the industry um but you know once you've gone over there and you kind of scratch that itch it's not that different some of the pros of the Australian industry? Uh, it's in Australia. <laughs> That's a pro. Not a bad spot. Yeah. Not a bad spot. Um, you know, we tell our own stories. Um, one of the pros about being here is, you know, I get work here. Really, that's a big pro. <laughs> yeah. If you're going to have any yeah. for an actor. Totally. Um, yeah, I really love, I love working here. I love working in the industry. 
uh, for as long as it lasts. I'm always kind of thinking like the next job's going to be the last one, so just enjoy it as much as possible. <laughs> That's fascinating to hear you say that, man, and terrifying. Yeah. Um, it's true. Totally. So, yeah, we've talked about good luck. And I guess I don't want to use the term nepotism, but, how, you know, relationships, how, how important have those relationships been? Oh, super important. You know, if you're going to be um, contemplating an industry, uh, you know, a career in this industry as an actor, um, or as anything else, really, you've got to know people. You know, you've got to put yourself out there. Yeah. And that's not in a bad way. I mean, it was kind of, when I started out, kind of being acting, being an actor was a, was, well, my generation, it was kind of frowned upon. We kind of, yeah, we're actors, but it's all bullshit and it's crap and it's just, a, you know, it's better than a real job, you know. A lot of, it was a, lot, it was a lot of front about all that kind of stuff. But I think we all knew that it was a great, great way to kind of spend your life and make a living. Um, but um, oh, look, most of the best jobs I've done have come about because I knew someone who knew someone who knew someone, or just someone you knew who was making something and you met them somewhere and they thought, oh, you could be right for this or, you know. So uh, don't, if you're gonna sit at home and just wait for your agent to find the work for you, it's not gonna, not gonna happen. I mean, it will, you know, you can probably pick up stuff here and there, but you really wanna go out and meet filmmakers and people who are getting stuff made and you know put on your own show I mean one thing I've noticed working with a lot of younger actors now is how up how kind of proactive they are in a way that I never was um, putting on their own shows making short films doing this kind of stuff mm. um, all of that is invaluable you know and and will lead to to other opportunities and other stuff and and again I want to say it's not about being a kiss ass and and doing it in a kind of overt manner it's just about you know, immersing yourself in the industry that you want to be a part of. If you're serious about it, then get out there. And so that proactive kind of impression that you get from younger actors, you're not not proactive, you're doing your own stuff. How have you found being perhaps off camera or in a producer's position or in a director's position? Um, yeah, it feel, I mean, being director, being a filmmaker feels just like a natural extension of, of my acting in a way. Uh, over the years, you, you build up certain ideas and biases and opinions about how things should go, um, and how you would run a set and how you would tell a particular story. And, and I, I feel most comfortable on a, on a film or TV set. You know, it's kind of my element, you know. And it's great to kind of be in the driving seat and it's the same kind of uh, part of your brain that you're using when you're really involved in performance. You know, it's something kind of, uh, I hate to use the word, but I'm going to, something kind of mindful about it. You can really switch off and close down and can really concentrate on something. It's great to kind of get into that flow. And um, the experiences I've had so far with filmmaking, I mean, I've made, made half a dozen short films, uh, is, is that feeling of just, you know, great concentration and really kind of... Um, making the film and decisions, particularly with performance that you wish were made when you're working as an actor as well. So, so it's kind of, kind of venting a lot of my uh, <laughs> frustrations. <laughs> into past directors. Making. That's right, uh, yeah. yeah. Yeah, there is something beautiful about that. And I think that's what I love about theater as well is that you go into that dark space, mm. everything is left at the door yeah. and you just create. Yeah. Just make a story, tell a story. Yeah, it's unique, you know, not a lot of people get to do that um, in, any, in any industry, really. You know, most people hate their jobs. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> At least I a lot know. of people I know do. Yeah, they do. What do, you, what do you appreciate most when you're sitting across from another actor or you're in a scene with an actor? What, what do you appreciate most in, in their performance or their presence on set? It's difficult to say. I mean... There are the obvious things you like someone who is professional and and uh, easy to work with. I've worked with actors who are just not easy to work with, but then they deliver incredible performances, you know, which is really frustrating. I know you want them to suck, but they don't. I know. Um, there are there are so many things that I enjoy about it. There are just moments that happen, 
often it's something that's not on the page. That's something that can occur when you when you're doing a scene. I mean, you, I, you, I have moments where you're in the middle of something and you turn around, and you go, "Oh, wow, well, we're you know, we're in the Flinders Ranges and it's sunset and there's two of us walking across the desert with a drone above our head and you know, pretending." Pretending. Yeah, pretending. That's <laughs> and right. We're getting paid. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Yeah it's, yeah, it's just moments like that I think you're always kind of aware, aware of. But in terms of, um, you know, just scene work with another actor, it's great when you just get into that kind of tennis match or boxing match, as Ben Mendelssohn calls it. <laughs> it is yeah. when you're acting with him. Yeah, I imagine. <laughs> um, it's kind of, uh, yeah, it's just doing what you love doing, it's, it's exciting. And is, is that about relationships? Just, just sitting down and, and, I don't know, I mean, yeah, you're, you're right, it does get wanky pretty quickly, but <laughs> is, it about, is it about kind of exploring, exploring the human experience? Yeah, well, no, it is. Yeah. Um, it often depends on what the job is, you know, and it depends on, on how much you're allowed to contribute. You know, one of the one of the problems with our industry, and particularly if you're working in film and TV, not so much theatre, where, where, where you really do get to have a say, well, I feel like you do anyway. There's, you're much more involved as an actor in the creative process, in the storytelling process, than you are. Uh, actually, then you, you can't really deviate off the script as much as you can in film and TV, but anyway. But at the end that of the aside, day in theatre, you, you're up there and you're in charge, kind of. In yeah, a way. you're kind of in charge. You know, once once you're on stage, there's no one stopping you. Going, oh, hold on, you know, or, you know, it's kind of you can and you can try different things, and you you have this kind of this period where it is all about the actors, you know, on stage, um, and other things to a lesser extent. But in film and TV, just given the amount of money and the short amount of time you have to get it done, um, often it's just about turning up hitting your mark, delivering and, you know, making sure you can do it in a couple of takes. Um, so as I guess, again, going back to my own filmmaking, you know, we're just talking about, I mean, I'm developing a feature at the moment and part of that process is going to be actually having a few days where once we have a, a, a you know, the script into a draft stage that we're, we're happy with, is involving actors a lot earlier in the storytelling process. So getting actors in to do scene work and then using them because I think actors are actually like good actors, actors who are um, either through training or just naturally talented. A lot of it is about psychology. Every choice you make when you're an actor, if, if, if you're an effective actor and you're good, it's because people believe what you're doing, you know? So that's about being a psychologist in a sense. You kind of, you know how a person would react in any give, given situation. So I kind of want to exploit that in, in my storytelling as well. And, and I've done that in my short films, just saying to actors, would this happen? Would you say this? What would you do in this situation? Would you do what's happening here? And, and, and give them permission to say, no, I wouldn't. You know, this is what I think would happen. And then ripping them off. <laughs> yeah. And so, and so it's about empathy. Yeah. And it's about responding truthfully in, in imaginary circumstances. Yeah. And I think a lot of that too is, you know, actors who've got some life experience outside of the industry as well, I guess. Is, a, is another important thing and kind of using that to inform your acting. Um, but, you know, there's a lot of different ways in, there's a lot of different techniques, there's a lot of different ways that people, people have to use to kind of, you know, get those performances happening. If it doesn't just instinctively pop. If it doesn't just pop. I <laughs> mean, you know, yeah, I mean, I'm never, I, I kind of sometimes, I, I'll look at a performance that I love and I go, oh, you know, I wonder if you could do that. But it's, uh, it, there's this kind of too much, um, emphasis on being able to go from zero to a hundred in, in 10 seconds, you know. Some people need more work to kind of get there and that's not a bad thing as well. And also sometimes a hundred is too far. Yeah, well, I mean, this is true. And I think, um, again, going back to my own kind of theories that I want to kind of put into my filmmaking is, is, is performance, uh, particularly screen performance. Not so much now, I think, Again, the younger generation I, I, I kind of grew up with it a lot more than, than we did. But traditionally, the Australian screen performance has been quite big, quite theatrical. That's changing a lot, which is something that I like because it's the kind of performances I like to watch. 
I want to talk a little bit about the influence of representation on your career. Uh -huh. Have you felt like you've been in control of the choices? Has that always been a collaboration? And has your representation over the years, which I assume has changed, mm -hmm. um, got new opportunities that you didn't expect? I think the important thing about an agent when you're just starting out is you need someone who's, who knows everyone and, and can get you in front of casting agents. You know, there's all these gatekeepers, you know, there's agents, there's casting agents, and then there's producers and there's directors. And, and you need someone who, um, you know, has a track record and can, you know, get those opportunities for you. But then ultimately you have, you know, it's going to have to, you're going to have to do the, get the job. Do your job. In the yeah. end. Yeah, I, I remember one of my agents very early on when I got a film, oh my God, I got this film, thank you so much. She goes, yeah, I did a great audition. And it's kind of, you know, that's the truth. They, they, they can only do so much for you. Um, and I've, I, you know, I know great actors who've got fantastic careers, who've got agents who aren't the biggest in the country as well. So, but as long as they have a good relationship with the person, they like them and they can talk to them on the phone, that's really important. I mean, you know, I just think of some of the jobs I've done recently, some of the best jobs I've done recently, and they, again, kind of came about through personal relationships, not so much through the traditional casting agent kind of, mm -hmm. kind of uh, way. Um, it's a mixture of all of those things. You just, just, you know, you've got to hurry up and get lucky. <laughs> so much about luck, isn't it? It's it is, yeah. But you can make that, you can, you can put yourself in the, in the way of opportunity in that way and prepare yeah be prepared be ready for it for, you know. for those fortunate opportunities yeah. and i guess back yourself hmm. trusting your casting maybe that's something interesting hmm. maybe that's something you can talk about I, I know a lot of actors who will you know they'll, they'll, they'll get a role and then they'll say oh, i've got to lose 10 kilos uh -huh. or, or they'll they'll get a role and, and, and try to change themselves in some way and i always think well but you were cast. A lot of the time <clears throat> with casting, and I know this from, from being on the other side, is, is that they don't know what they want. You know, they're, they're, they're waiting for someone to walk in and show them what they want. Um, and you can't second guess that. You can kind of come up with an idea when you look at the page. Often there's not much to go on at all. It's just doctor, lawyer, priest, something like that, you know. Um, so you just have to make some choices and go in there and, and do the best job you can and and it may just work you know it's it's that kind of simple and that kind of hard at the same time but yeah they, they often don't know what they're looking for until until you kind of deliver it yeah so is is your process when you get an audition script do you do you get the full script are you able to read it you know how do you how do you process that? What's your process before audition? Um, generally speaking, if I'm asked to read for something, the first question is like, who's directing it? Do they have a track record? You know, are they going to be there? Um, yeah, I can get a bit kind of cranky about that sometimes. <laughs> um, <clears throat> but often, you know, I make the same mistakes over and over again. I don't learn my lines well enough, you know. Um, I think, I think you can't be too prepared. Just, just really prepare. Just do, for me, the thing that works really well, and this, this goes to auditioning or just turning up on set, is just being really on top of the material and knowing it so well that I can do anything with it. So that's just a practical thing of learning your lines and just to the point where you can do anything with it and, and you can change it and you can do any adjustment that they throw at you. Um, and it just really helps with nerves. I've always, I've always hated the audition process and I'm always amazed that I've ever got a job doing it. <laughs> and, and, you know, there's these actors who say, I love auditioning, it gives me a chance to, to uh, you know, <clears throat> to act. And I think it's bullshit. It's just <laughs> fucking awful, you know? There's nothing about it that's good because, like, when you turn up on a set, you've got the job, you know? I'm relaxed and you know everyone and you're, kind of, you're there to do your thing. Well, well auditioning is, like... It's in a crap room with bad lighting, with someone who can't act, terrible camera, you know you look crap. <laughs> always look bad. It's always, always really look hard. Bad. Yeah. It's always really hard. But yeah, so, you know, just, just be really prepared. Learn your lines. Make some choices. 
you know, think about what it is that you want to do, that you want to affect the other uh, character. Don't try and second guess them too much and just, um, just make some interesting choices. And work with people that you trust and, and want to work with. That's right, yeah, yeah. 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 Don't do a job, if you really know that you're going to hate it, don't do it because you'll regret it because it will just be, I've done that before and it, it never works out. <laughs> okay. All right, Matt Day, thank you very much. Pleasure.